In the third year of Hosha, son of Elah, king of Israel, Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. He was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem twenty-nine years. His mother's name was Abijah, daughter of Zechariah. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father David had done. He removed the the high places, smashed the sacred stones, and cut down the Asera poles. He broke into pieces the bronze snakes Moses has made, for up to that time the Israelites had been burning incense to it. It was called Neshustan. Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. There was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before him or after him. He held fast to the Lord and did not stop following him. He kept the commands the Lord had given Moses, and the Lord was with him. He was successful in whatever he undertook. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. From watchtower to fortified city, he defeated the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territory. In King Hezekiah's fourth year, which was the seventh year of Hosha, son of Elah, king of Israel, Shalmaneser king of Assyria marched against Samaria and lay siege to it. At the end of three years, the Assyrians took it, so Samaria was captured in Hezekiah's sixth year, which was the ninth year of Hosha, king of Israel. The king of Assyria deported Israel to Assyria and settled them in Hala, in Gozan, on the harbor river, and in towns of the Medes. This happened because they had not obeyed the Lord their God, but had violated his covenant. All that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded, they had neither listened to the commands nor carried them out. Hezekiah was only 25 years old when he became king. Remembered as one of the greatest kings of Judah, he trusted God and kept his commandments. He tore down all the idolatry across the nation, removing the high places, breaking the pillars, cutting down the Asherah, and even breaking the bronze serpent Moses had made because the people were making offerings to it. When Hezekiah ascended to the throne, Assyria was sweeping across Mesopotamia, and there was no ordinary military power, and they were no ordinary military power. With their superior abilities in siege warfare and their reliance on sheer, unadulterated terror, the Assyrians made examples of those who resisted them, including deportations at best and horrific physical torture at worst. The northern kingdom of Israel had just been conquered and deported by Assyria, and upon becoming king, Hezekiah must have considered immediately uh, bolstering his military. But he didn't. Hezekiah knew he must put first things first. Without God, all the military might on earth was useless. So in the first year of his reign, Hezekiah put Israel's spiritual house in order. He reopened and repaired the temple. He consecrated the people of Judah to, the, to their God in repentance, sacrifice, and worship. He tore down all the idols. Scripture is clear about the connection between King Hezekiah's actions and God's response. And the Lord was with him wherever he went out. He prospered, 2 Kings 18.7. None of us is facing a physical army like Assyria today, but each of us is faced with spiritual forces of evil. Will we succumb to the darkness around us and exchange the truth of God for lies? Or will we tear down our idols of acceptance, success, and entertainment to be fully devoted to God? For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but we have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments or even lofty opinions raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. Show us, God, the strongholds in our lives and through the strength of your Holy Spirit, help us demolish them.